Yeah, KJ, just wanted to see if you could take us through what you were thinking uh, as you saw the car on fire and um, just what was going through your head as you decide whether or not to, to go over there and, and jump in or respond. Right. So uh, initially, we, uh, my Uber driver, Abdul, and myself, uh, Abdul pulled over and we were running to this car. And again, like I've said it before, you know, we see the car on fire. And, um, you know, you see this stuff in movies or, you know, video games or TV. Um, but, you know, it's different when it's, you know, <clears throat> real flames in front of you. Excuse me. <clears throat> it's different when it's real flames in, in front of you. And so I'm running, you know, uh, initially, you know, I want to be this this hero and, you know, go, you know, uh, help save this guy because, you know, I, I'm an NFL athlete and I work out and stuff. I could easily just, you know, unbuckle the seatbelt and be able to just, you know, pull him out the car like like kind of by force. But then I'm like, OK, as I'm running there. As I, the closer I get, I'm like, uh, and I, you know, I'll, I'll start, you know, my, my mom is in my head and my family and, you know, and I'm like, I'm risking a lot here. Um, and, but my Uber driver, Abdul, I mean, he went right up to the car. He, he opened the, the passenger door. He's talking to this guy, you know, are you alive? You're okay. Um, and then there's a, a two other, a friend group uh, named Arthur and Rita. And Arthur is, is yelling at Abdul, like, you know, like back up, like, you know, we don't know if this car is going to blow up. And Abdul was, was in it. And, um, you know, initially, I think, you know, looking back on, I think that kind of motivated me to be like, you know, uh, you know, we got to save this guy, you know, he, you know, because I'm a football player or anything, none of that matters. You know, this guy's life is important. And, you know, this guy has a family, he has kids, you know, and he, if he can do it, you know, uh, you know, I can, I can get down there and help as well. And, uh, uh, the, the driver was able to get some strength to kind of lean over and we went down, you know, dragged him out. And then, um, you know, I picked him up and we were able to, to, you know, move far away. Uh, so the car didn't blow up, but um, I was just happy that we were able to get him out and uh, the, the firefighters were able to extinguish the fire before, you know, the car exploded. KJ, how long would you say that this recovery process took you guys? It took about uh, about three and a half minutes. Actually, uh, I, I recorded the whole thing up until I had to, to pick him up. Obviously, I'm not going to release the video, but I think the video is about three minutes and three seconds. And, you know, we about from that time, we picked him up. So I would say about three and a half, maybe, maybe four minutes. And uh, uh, the, fire, the firefighters and the ambulance got there pretty fast because after we, uh, you know, pulled them away, you know, they, they got there pretty fast and, and let out the fire. Two part question. Uh, here's a follow up. What were you doing in Austin at that time? Where were you coming from? And secondly, did it feel like a lot longer than three minutes while you were right there deciding to jump in and help out? Right. So I, I was, I was on my way back home and, um, you know, this is my last weekend in Austin. I'm going back to Miami. So I was with, uh, you know, my trainer and, you know, a couple of guys that I was out training with and, uh, definitely it felt way longer than three minutes. Uh, definitely, you know, when you, when you see that fire and, you know, just the flames, you know, even in the picture, I mean, it doesn't even give the whole, um, you know, realization of what was going on because like, you know, the flames are, are bursting and, you know, there's tires popping, you know, that, that kind of, you know, started all, startled all of us and everything like that. So, um, you know, it was definitely, definitely felt longer than three minutes. We'll go Kevin and Dane. Yeah, KJ, have you had any contact with uh, with the guy who was in the car since uh, since this? I think you had mentioned that you were going to try to seek him out. Um, and also, after that, I'm just curious, like, the extent to which you think this has changed you as a person. Right. So the first question, and this is, this is new news, I did find the guy. I found him last night. Um, just through some, some mutual friends, um, we, uh, you know, some, it's a couple of our, my mutual friends that, um, that know him and, and know myself and then a couple of his friends, you know, had just, you know, I was going through some DMs. They had, you know, DM me telling me, you know, I saved his life and they were so grateful and happy. Um, so I'm, I'm still waiting to, you know, see how he's doing and everything like that. I was, you know, I don't want to release his name and, and everything like that. Um, you know, but we'll, uh, at the proper time, you know, if it's, if it's right, you know, we'll, we'll come out with something and things like that. I still haven't spoke to him, but I do know, um, who he is. And, um, your second question, how has this changed me, man? Um, I mean, I feel like I've always kind of prided myself on being, you know, a leader, you know, and a stand up guy. And you know, like I've, I've said in other interviews, like, you know, if it wasn't for the NFL, you know, I would get my master's in criminal justice, you know, I wanted to be in the FBI or the secret service. So, um, you know, ironically, you know, these are the acts that, you know, I that was kind of, I was trying to aim to be my profession um, outside of the NFL. But, you know, obviously, you know, when it's live bullets and, you know, you see this, this car on fire, um, it's obviously a lot different, uh, you know, when you, when you got a lot to risk like that. Um, so as far as changing me, 
Um, I don't think it has changed me as a person, but I can say that, you know, just the experience, you know, it's kind of inspired me to, uh, you know, continue to inspire others and, and be a leader and a, and a role model. Um, because, you know, I tell kids all the time, you know, the fact that, you know, people look up to me, my family and kids or, you know, whoever, you know, inspires me to be myself every day and continue to lead and continue to, you know, even on bad days, you know, to, to present myself, um, you know, who I am, you know, first class and things like that. Definitely a, a crazy experience, you know, like I said, um, you know, right place, right time. Um, and another thing, you know, uh, it wasn't just me, you know, it was, you know, it was Arthur, it was Rita, it was Abdul, who, who I've, you know, been in connection with and talking to out throughout this week and, um, you know, uh, staying in contact with them because they're not really on social media much. So I'm, I'm telling them, you know, this story, you know, millions of people are, are seeing this and I want you guys to um, know that people are, are grateful for you as well. Of course, they're going to talk about the football player, but, um, you know, those three are heroes. So just just to be clear, you did not know any of those people before at uh, Arthur or, or Rita before no. this. OK, absolutely not. KJ, uh, you mentioned like the fight or flight when you guys were going up to the burning car. Just once you recover the, the guy, uh, what are the emotions with, with the four of you? I guess the five of you afterwards. Right. So uh, definitely in shock, uh, definitely in shock. You know, we, we were able to, to get him out and, um, you know, as it, was, it was still kind of kind of processing. And, you know, I, I took the picture because I told him, you know, like, you know, I, I play football. So, you know, this is going to be a story. And, you know, I knew the story, of course, is going to be, you know, KJ Osborne, the NFL receiver, helped save a guy from a burning car. But I'm like, you know, I want people to see you guys' faces. And, you know, so I kind of thought quickly about that. But um, everything else, it was still just kind of hit me. And I thought, you know, it was going to be just a normal night and I was going to be able to just go to sleep and, you know, wake up, you know, I'll probably tell my parents and things like that. I'm sure, you know, some story, you know, maybe a small article that came out about it or something like that. But, um, you know, it's, it's a story that's, you know, going across the nation and things like that. I wasn't able to sleep that night at all. Um, I still I was waking up last night still, you know, still kind of, you know, settling, settling down from it. Um, so, you know, definitely I'm just grateful that, uh, you know, God was able to use me to be there at the right time. You know, I, I continue to say that because, you know, I've never been to Austin, Texas. I'm only here for a couple of weeks to, to get the foundation of my training. Um, and my trainer moved here and I came here, you know, I was out and I was uh, on my way home and I missed my first Uber. So I'm like, if I would have gotten the first Uber, I would never even have seen that, you know, and, um, you know, and then to, to see this guy, you know, see that we have, we have close mutual friends. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm excited to be able to, to speak to him privately and, um, you know, just just get a chance to shake his hand or, or something. Hey, KJ, for the record, um, when you guys decided to stop and go help out, were there any other cars in the vicinity? Was there any other help around outside of you guys or were you guys the only option for that man? We were the, we were the only option. <clears throat> um, and that's why I uh, I applauded Abdul so much, because even as if I was a driver, like I don't I can't say 100 percent that I would have stopped. Um, and if I did stop, I, I don't know, I don't know what I would have did in the situation, but, you know, Abdul stopped so fast and we hopped out in the car. Like I said, there was nobody else on the street. You know, I didn't see the crash or hear it because I was on my phone. My head was down. And when I looked up, there was nobody on the street. So I didn't know what was going on at first. Um, and then, like you said, Abdul stopped and, and Rita and Arthur had stopped right behind us. Um, and, you know, there were, there was no other cars inside at all. Jeff? Oh, hey, KJ, I have a two-parter. Um, I guess, like you alluded to earlier, a lot of people just don't know you as a Vikings receiver, as an NFL player. So what is it like for you to be labeled a hero in this situation and save somebody's life? And what inspired you to pursue a career in criminal justice if it wasn't for football? Right. Uh, how does it feel to, to be labeled as a hero? Um, I, I guess it feels good. Um, you know, I, uh, I was talking to a family about this, you know, I knew the story would blow up, obviously, but, you know, I was doing it, you know, out of, you know, the kindness of my heart, you know, and to be genuine, you know, like I said, you know, football or game mattered, uh, you know, at, at that point at all, you know, I was just being, you know, trying to be a good person, you know, I would want somebody to do that for my brother or my dad or uncle or, or whatever, or even yourself um, to, to, you know, be able to try to, to help somebody, you know, from a burning fire, no matter, you know, who I was or, or who anybody else was. Um, so uh, it is, you know, humbling and, you know, uh, I'm grateful that, you know, I was able to be there. But um, as I was telling my, you know, my media team, you know, I, I just, I haven't been trying to make this story um, about me. You know, I, I just like the, I'm so happy that the guy is alive. You know, I had help 
And, um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely grateful that, um, you know, I was able to, to be there, you know, it just so happened, of course, that I was a football player and, um, you know, I, I wanted to pursue that other career. Uh, and as far as the FBI and Secret Service, you know, I've got that question a lot before and I've always told him, I think it's from TV shows, you know, just the, the normal TV shows. When I was uh, younger, I would always watch First 48 or, you know, I, I like the, the, you know, the, the crime movies or um, what was the movie? Uh, 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 one of the, the crime movies, I can't, I can't think of it at the top of my head, but uh, these, these movies that, you know, they're, they're, uh, it's like White House Down. That's the thing I think I'm thinking of that, like White House Down and, you know, those type of movies um, where, you know, you have the, the Secret Service and they're, they're saving people and uh, type of thing like that. And, you know, just, just solving crime. I think I just found myself interested in that. And that's just something that, that I pursued. And, um, you know, obviously the NFL is, is working right now, but, um, you know, definitely something, you know, that could happen down the line or something. Craig? Hey, KJ, <clears throat> excuse me, congrats on this. Um, just uh, wondering if you could like feel the heat from the flames, how intense they were, and then um, what what you and the other Samaritans did to try to keep the motorist as calm as possible in that situation and and help him realize that, that you were going to be able to provide that help. Right. So uh, initially, uh, no, I did not feel any flames because uh, when we were kind of quickly game planning on what to do, you know, I was I was standing, you know, pretty far back. Uh, I, I, I might have been like 15 yards back, you know, because as we were trying to discuss what we were going to do. And then uh, when I got to the car, it was like immediately like, you know, I got down there, pulled him out, picked him up, went away. So I didn't really get a chance to uh, thankfully uh, feel much flames or, or anything like that. I did kind of have like an oversized hoodie. So I was kind of worried that a flame may, may kind of get to us. I thought, you know, when I, I initially ran down there, I should maybe take it off, but I didn't. And um, no, I didn't, I didn't feel any flames. And um, at the time, the driver, excuse me, <coughs> The driver, uh, you know, he was still in the daze a little bit. I think he may have went unconscious for a little bit. I think he started to feel the the heat on his legs, and that's when it kind of woke him up. And um, you know, he was just a, a driver that you know had just gotten a car accident. You know, so um, as I was, I picked him up, and I'm carrying him. You know, he was, you know, he was talking, and you know, I was just telling him, you know, I got you, I got you. And um, but that was that was pretty much it. You know, before the, the police got there, so you know, it was no real uh, conversation or, or anything like that. Any other questions for KJ? Go ahead, Chris. Uh, yeah, yeah, hey, uh, KJ, uh, congrats on the great job done there. I hope you don't mind if I ask you a, a question not related to that. I'm wondering if you've had any conversations with Adam Thielen just about his future. I mean, he said last night there were discussions about his contract. He might have to take a pay cut to return. I'm wondering if you have, have been talking to him at all or if you have any thoughts on whether he might be back with the Vikings in 2023. Yeah, so I haven't talked to him uh, this offseason much. I, I seen something on Instagram that I sent him that was funny. I sent it to him. We talked about that. But as far as the contract or anything, no, I haven't, I haven't spoke to him about that. Um, the last time I seen him was in a locker room. And, you know, obviously I know it's a business, so um, I'm not sure what's going to happen. But, you know, I, I hugged him. You know, I, I had a little bit of tears in my eyes and I was just thanking him because I wasn't sure what's going to happen. Um, I've said it before, you know, Adam is one of the, you know, if not the best teammate, besides my, my best friend that plays for the Seahawks, the best teammate I've ever had um, ever since I came to the Minnesota Vikings. I got drafted, you know, him reaching out to me, texting me, calling me. You know, he wasn't like big time me or, you know, you know, being this you know, big time pro bowl receiver and the guy I watch highlights of and things like that. Um, took him, taking me under my wing, uh, no matter any situation, you know, I, I can't tell if, if Adam is ever having a bad day, he's coming in the, in the, in the building, he's yelling, he's running, he got his coffee, great energy. Um, I have awesome dad, husband, you know, teammate. Um, so, uh, you know, I haven't talked to him about the contract and stuff like that. Um, so I know we'll, we'll see what happens, but, um, you know, that's, I, that's the last time, you know, I had, I had seen him. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thanks, KJ, for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys.